Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here, despite the fact that on yesterday's episode, we decided to abandon the material that we had started making. Sadly, it just wasn't what I felt comfortable making a sword out of. There were little impurities in there. Now, it's a part of the process of working, you know, making wrought anything if it's hard steel. If it's wrought iron, it ends up there. I just didn't feel comfortable with it being there in the sword that we were going to be making. I wanted to have a better sword. So we're going to be starting afresh on that material in this episode. But first, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start thinking about some of the shapes of the guard because cavalry sabers have phenomenally beautiful guards on their dress sabers. So we're going to be working on that. But before we get into it, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. It's an online learning community with over 25,000 online video courses in everything from business to photography to marketing to drawing. And first thing that we actually want to talk about is we want to talk about some of the design that we've been doing because this all has a lot to do about what we're going to be doing with some modeling clay. This is a 32 and a half inch long blade. It has a slight curve to it. There is a fuller that comes up nice and close to the spine, and then a grind that's only really about 3 8 to a half inch down to the edge. And this is a pretty regular looking size and width of a cavalry saber. Both the cavalry sabers that were very much used and the dress cavalry sabers. There is there is a lot about a dress cavalry saber. There's a lot of there's a lot of cool history about them. Sometimes what would happen is in the defeat of a battle, the defeated would hand over as a token of their loss to the victors a beautiful sword. So there's an amazing amount of gentlemanliness mm -hmm. and and an ethic involved with these things in what was a very obviously extremely brutal time, and it's it's very fascinating to learn about the history of these pieces. We have this edge that goes the whole way along this thing, and we're gonna make the whole thing sharp mm -hmm. because we want to. Interesting tidbit, they actually didn't use to sharpen the whole swords because they thought it was too barbaric for it to be a slashing weapon. Mm -hmm. And so they would just sharpen the points and it would just be a stabbing weapon. The reason we're talking about drawing and design is because we're working on drawing and design and I want to play with Play-Doh. Alec, this is Play-Doh, not Work-Doh. We spent some time designing handles and it's very difficult because as you can see from these photos of these beautiful ornamental dress sabers, there is a huge amount of variation and a huge amount of dimension to them. They're very 3D. There's a lot that goes on with them, and we want to put a lot into ours, but it means we've got to design it. Now, that's where this comes in. We're going to take the modeling dough, and we're going to start making up some rough shapes to scale, to see what is the shape that we want, what is the size that we want, what are some curves that look good. So it's time to break out the play dough and go back in time in 10 years. Here well, we what? we have a power hammer. This is problematic. Steel doesn't do that. There we go. Perfect. So this right here is why plasticine is very handy, not necessarily very, very nice, but very handy to very simply and quickly visualize some 3D shapes. I'm pleased that we did this because this, it visualizes what we want to aim for. It's going to be nice to look at this, help visualize it. This helps us get a better drawing in the future because we're going to yeah. use this as a drawing tool, as a planning tool. But you remember yesterday we got a lathe and a mill? We're going to get the mill off the pallet and get it in place. This is exciting as can be. This is a refurbished two horsepower bridge port with the variable speed, with a brand new DRO, power feed on the X axis. This thing has been rebuilt, refurbished, it's been scraped in here. I hope they've done a good job. I hope that scraping means that this is all flat and it's not just for looks. It does look pretty awesome. Over here is a Monarch 10EE 
tool room lathe. This was built in 1942. The old one we had was built in 1943. This is just a beautiful piece of equipment. It is, in terms of size, about the same size as my old Colchester student overall build, but it's actually smaller in this general area because it's very sturdily built for the actual swing, for the size between centers. It's meant to be a very good lathe. This lathe was on a battleship. Pretty cool. Pretty nice to have this here in the workshop. It's going to be very nice to get this up and running. Oh yes, I am excited. And there are more fun toys that have arrived over here. Have a look at this. Now, you know, I just got my hand in paint. Love engraving. On the Viking Sword project, I got into engraving. I got into the fine stuff, and I loved dipping my toes in it. Well, in all of this, on this side over here, this is all engraving type stuff, but over here, this is all supplies for casting. You remember, a little over a year ago, I got into casting for the first time. I tried it. I failed miserably. I had a lot of fun. I then went to a local shop where I saw casting being done professionally. Learn a lot. Never had the opportunity. I got more paint on my thumb. Never had the opportunity to do it again. Well, I want to do more of it just like I want to do more engraving. And this sword is going to call for more casting. So first of all, I got a lot of unboxing to do. Then I'm going to show you the goodies I have. a lot of packaging but not a lot of stuff oh boy all right so here's the deal while Alex over there working on that I'm gonna take this 15 and 20 fire up the plasma cutter and get it sliced up into pieces that we can weld together to forge the new blade Got this big old block of 15 and 20 welded up, ready to get forged welded together, and then forged into the blade for our cavalry saber. smashed out this whole billet. I'm gonna go grind the edges, uh, make sure we've got super clean material before we start forging out the blade. Alex has been working on the engraving stuff over there. So I've been working on setting up this engraving stuff. Here we have a grinder for sharpening things. Over here we have the unit that powers this high speed burr tool rotary thing. What's it? This thing does 320,000 RPM with a 16th inch burr. It also powers this hand piece, which has gravers in it for engraving. But this unit here requires air, and it requires extremely clean air. There can't be any water, there can't be any oil. We have an airline right here. We have a water filter and all of that, but condensation, all that fun stuff means that what I have done is I've made a trip to the helpful place with the helpful hardware folks. I've bought some more airline. I bought some more fittings. I've bought another air filter and another air filter. Now, one thing I've already noticed is I don't like having this big unit up here. So I'm going to put it on the shelf underneath there. So I'm going to unplug this thing. Uh-oh. Unplug this thing. I'm going to unplug the power supply. Scooter on down yonder. Plug this thing back in. Put the power supply back in and scoot it on back. No, I almost out of line for the graver. It's so far away from where I'm going to be cutting. Definitely going to have to come. Oh, that's not good. Why did that happen? Did you just see that? What on earth? Now we'll see if this is long enough. Really quite close. I don't know if this will be long enough. Worst case scenario, I'm going to move it onto a stand up here. So I'm just going to spend some more time getting some air supplied to the unit underneath the bench. I'm going to do some of that. We'll still grinding. So here we go. So back over here, Will has done the grinding. How does it look? It looks 
so clean. You can't see a single weld line on the entire thing. Perfect. Fantastic. Just what we want. Did we just do that at the same time? We did this at the same time. We're the same person. This is terrible. We got clean steel, which means that now, since we're not making a pattern, we need to think of the design of the piece. And that's why we got this handy with us. And when you look at it on the drawing, all of a sudden it looks like a really long sword. It's huge. This is insane. We have a lot of material to draw out because this is 32 and a half inches to there. The overall length of this thing is like 40 inches plus. How long is that handle? Four and a half, five inches. So 32 and five would it's make- It's like 37 inches overall. We're gonna keep this handy. We're gonna forge it proud of this in every single dimension. And this is it. This is the first sword that we will have ever forged here in this workshop in Montana. Let's get to it. So we have this puppy forged out. Now that's a long old piece of steel. It's also quite thick. Right now we're looking at a piece of steel. It's a little under 3 eighths of an inch thick. It's about nine millimeters or so. Way thicker, more than double as thick as any part of this sword is gonna end up being. Obviously, we got the drawing with us, so we know that we are wider than we need to be on all of it. We don't have the curve in it, however. We also don't have the tang. A little refreshing, it's been a while since we've done any knives here. The tang is the part of the sword that goes in and through the handle. You wanna let them know that's not the handle we're gonna be doing either? Yes, what he said. So, for us to get to this point with the curved sword, we need to curve the sword and forge a tang. What do you wanna do first? I think we should probably forge the tang first. like me forge on swords this long. This thing looks amazing though. It's starting to look like the kind of curve that we want. Should we put it up to the drawing? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, but for an eyeball, that's pretty dead gum good. That is pretty amazing. I think the tip was slightly too far bent out. Just a tiny little bit. So, so this... we need to take it right here and straighten that some more. I think it needs a little straightening right here. Just a tiniest little bit. Frankly, I think that that's almost perfect. Would you look at that? That is a one forged blade, about as heavy as imaginable. This is over twice as thick and over twice as heavy as the final thing is gonna be. Final weight we're shooting for, it's gonna be between two and two and a half pounds, which is, you know, historically pretty, pretty normal for one of these 32 and a half inch long cavalry sabers and right that, now. That blade is like five and a half pounds right now. So it's going to get an extreme weight loss program. It's going to go through and uh, hopefully get, get trim and fit and, and into shape. Absolutely. I mean, lots of, lots of you guys have commented on videos in the past about, oh, you waste so much material. Why do you waste so much material? Well, the reason is, is we want things to be as thick as possible, especially when we go into the heat treat, mm -hmm. especially after the forging, so that we can grind out any warps and any bends and end up with a very, very nice product at the end of it. And I don't really consider it wastage so much when having this material is essential to the end completion of the item. It's not essential, but it's extremely it's helpful. It's insurance. Exactly. The extra material is insurance, and that's the way to think of it. 
as, uh, as opposed to wastage because it's extremely useful to have that material. As we round out the video, we want to thank today's sponsor, which is, of course, Skillshare, a long-time sponsor of the show and a fantastic online learning platform. They have over 25,000 online courses, so they are videos that you can access with their membership to learn everything from marketing to videography to painting to drawing. And such a big fundamental part mm -hmm. of being able to make anything is being able to draw it, and it is very difficult to draw well. It's a skill that needs to be practiced, and you have been doing a fantastic job of the drawing on this. And it's an exciting thing, taking a historical example and using that as the example for something that you're making today. Which is why the course that we want to recommend is Vintage Hand Lettering by Mary-Kate McDevitt. In this course, you're going to be learning about taking influence and taking inspiration from old pieces of art or pieces of design and then putting them into your work. You're also going to be helping hone your skills of drawing, which are just so fundamental. So be sure to check out that course. And of course, the first thousand of you that hit my link in the description are going to be getting two months of Skillshare Premium for free. It's usually just 10 bucks a month. It's a hell of a deal already. It's an even better deal with two months free. Check it out. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring the episode. Thank you guys for being here. Pleasure as always. See you on the next one when we make some more progress with this sword.